Hello, welcome to 30 Minutes. I'm Rick Anthony. For some time, the Willis Mansion has been on and off the public agenda of the Radnor Township Board of Commissioners. The sprawling building has been the uh, centerpiece of a 47-acre uh, public park uh, purchased by the township in 1975 for about $1 million. For public use, underscore for public use, which is going to be the theme of this uh, program today. It's in the deed for public use, a restriction that would require the townships taking legal action to amend the deed to do something other with the property like lease or sell the mansion to a third party for any other purpose that would either limit or completely eliminate uh, the access to the building by residents of uh, Radnor Township or other visitors. That's my understanding that the township would have to take legal action, probably go to the Orphan's Court, to get relief from the existing deed that dates back to 1975. In recent months, the township retained an outside firm to come up with estimates for the various proposals that have been submitted by individuals and groups within the township, and in some cases outside of the township, uh, to repurpose the building. Uh, the proposals have ranged from completely demolishing the building and starting over, uh, to refurbishing, completely refurbishing the building uh, so that it would have uh, the modern uh, uh, requirements, uh, the codes, et cetera, et cetera. Right now the building is shuttered. It's not in use at all. It's in pretty bad repair. The latter, the proposal to selectively demolish the building and create something that would be multi-purpose space for residents of Radnor Township and visitors uh, is what we're going to be talking about today. And it is a proposal that was first presented by Sarah Pilling, a local activist uh, who lives in uh, Delaware County in uh, Garrett, Garrett, Garrett Hill, Hill uh, and has been on this case for a very, very long time. And thank goodness for it, uh, because she continues to bring to the attention of the Board of Commissioners and the entire community uh, the need to preserve not so much the building, but the open space it represents. Sarah Pilling. Uh, Thank Sarah you for has, having me. has been here before yes. on this same issue, uh, has continued to, to labor, uh, to refine the concept, to get more people involved, to make more people aware of her proposal to repurpose the space, not so much the building, the, the, but the space. Yes. Sarah has ancestral as well as avocational ties to the Willows. Right. Uh, tell us what that's all about. Well, my mother's father, my grandfather, was the architect for the building in 1910. Mm -hmm. He was a Philadelphian, I guess you would call a fine old family in Philadelphia. They were Swedish, came in 1643. Uh, and he went to Penn uh, School of Architecture, uh, studied under Theophilus P. Chandler, which is mm -hmm. a name that is very familiar in Radnor, a number of churches. And he was hired by John Sinnott of Gibson Distillery to build a home for he and mm -hmm. his bride on the land, which we call the Willows. They called Rose Garland. Um, he went on to do many, many, many houses. Um, the most notable, I suppose you could say, is uh, Rinalda in Winston-Salem, which he did for Catherine Reynolds. It was in a thousand acre property and oh. he built dairies and barns and schools and tenant houses. And I knew, never knew him. He died in 1931. He was not that old, but he had mm -hmm. a stroke and died. And when I became aware first of the park and then of the house, and of course I'm one of the founders of the community vegetable garden, which is just down below the house. I got very interested. I'm a very pragmatic person and I believe that form follows function mm -hmm. and so the concept I have is exactly that. Does the building itself have any historical or architectural significance, value? It did have architectural significance in that in the first issue of the American Country Home in 1913 this house was was featured. Mm -hmm as it was the right of the next owners, they, they did rigorous uh, realignment of both the interior and the mm -hmm. exterior. 
probably late 50s, 60s, I believe their son was an architect, so mm -hmm. all the crown molding, all the baseboard, all the touches of 1910 are gone, and they raised the roof, so it now it, the roof line is very strange, and they remodeled the exterior. They had a right to do that, yes. but in an effect, it took the, the essence of what was Charles Barton Keene out of the building. Were there additions to the building as well in the 50s? Uh, the solarium yes. was added, the roof was raised um, in 1910, the servants lived in the attic, mm -hmm. but uh, when the second owners had children, they raised the roof, and then there were two beautiful gazebos off the back of the house that were built into the house, not mm -hmm. added on, so they tore them off and extended the dining room and then they widened the front hall and they changed. It's, mm -hmm. it's very, 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 very changed. Uh, it, it's on 47 acres now. Were there originally 47 acres? They bought 47 acres. Actually, the Willows Park yes. is now about 150 to 160 acres with the purchase of the land. First, uh, what is called Skunk Hollow. Yes. That was owned by the Scott family, and mm -hmm. that was bought with some sort of state money, and then they've bought, what, 60-some acres from our Drossen this last time. More recently. So it's now yeah. a very large hmm. park, mm -hmm. and I think I'm there all the time because of the garden. Yes. It's a beautiful park. Uh, the house was sited perfectly for yes. the view shed. Yes. That land did not come down that way. They had one of the foremost landscape architects in the country at the time. His mm -hmm. name was Thomas Sears, and he remolded the land mm -hmm. to have that beautiful plateau for yes. the house. And apparently there were six ponds, and they made it into one pond. And you, you have spent many more hours than I sitting in uh, commissioners' meetings and public meetings, hearing yes. people go back and forth on, on the merits of saving the building, demolishing the building, and so on. But if, as you say, and others, I've heard it from others as well, the building has no historical, uh, no architectural significance. Right. Why would, from a, strictly from a business standpoint, why would the township or the owner of the property, whoever that might be, spend good money to, to restore it to what? To what it is today, to what it was 110 years ago? Exactly. To what? And to what purpose? Because unless they got the first floor, at least the first floor, so that public meetings, large venues uh, can be uh, conducted there, the building really has no functional purpose. And those Does it? walls are, are weight-bearing. I'm not quite oh, sure. So that that they you can't can have an open space. It. No. Yeah. I think it's two things. I think it's emotional. My daughter's wedding was in that building. Yes. You can't possibly do anything with it. Or my first cousin's 50th wedding anniversary mm -hmm. or, or it's been mentioned the seniors have a quiet place to sign their yearbooks. Mm -hmm. uh, at, in the beginning in the 70s there were not that many establishments where you could have a large party and they although they as I understand it I can't read a balance sheet very well uh, they may have made money in the beginning mm -hmm. But they're now, it's, and I don't mean to run it down, because I think the bare bones is still beautiful. It's the landscape, it's the yeah, view shed. Yeah. They can go to Overbrook, they can go to Aronimic, has built a beautiful place. Uh, uh, Jeffrey Miller, who is maybe going to come in, must have seven, eight, nine mm -hmm. venues now where everything is provided. It, I, and the, now the building's been out of existence or been out of use for five years. I'm afraid the market's gone by. Yeah. And we know now that the house is, the, the infrastructure, whatever you want to call it, is not up to code. And is, uh, to some extent, dangerous for certain uses. Yes, you can't, what, what, you whether should not. Whether or not the flooring not, will take a, right, a large That's right, the joists trip. are not set for... Yeah. 50, 60, mm -hmm. 100 people, particularly if they danced. Yes. I was in there this summer with an historic architect, and the floor was quivering mm -hmm. in the what was called the billiard room. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I just want it to be 
public space, public use, anybody go up there, take your yoga class, your book group, your just sit there, picnic suppers. Um, I have this imagination of painting a ground cloth that looks like checkers well, don't or chess. Get ahead of yourself. Well, but I see the yeah. public using it 90% of the time for free. Okay, so your idea is to take down the existing, selectively yes. demolish the existing structure, right? leaving Use only the those architectural elements right. that are worth saving exactly, and that are signature pieces. Yes. Right? They, they were part of the original structure, like the chimneys, the, the outside facade, facade right. uh, the and Spanish uh, the uh, roof, design, yeah, the roof. roof line. Yes. And how would you, that, is that reconfiguring the space? How do we describe? Well, it's not demolishing. No. It's selective it's, well, demolishing. Uh, Commissioner Curley called it most postmodern reconstruction. Oh, I remember his saying that. Yeah, I don't know what that means. I don't know what it means either. <laughs> okay. it's because it's not uh, a ruin, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's it's a reconfiguration. So, so we invited Sarah here today for the debut of the model of what she and others envision uh, to reconfigure the footprint yes. of the existing building called the Willows Mansion, which is really a misnomer because it's not a mansion, was never a mansion. Right. It was a, an opulent residence, yes. but it was never a mansion. In 1910 it In was. 19, okay. So what do we have here? All right. Sarah, so we have a model you've been working on for some time. Right. So right. that instead of try asking us to imagine what it might look like, you're now illustrating right. what it might look like. So this is the original footprint, and you can see the back facade so you know where you are. And I've left the floor spaces on so that people can understand them, but I will take them off now. That was the solarium. This is the bathrooms and the closets. This is part of the billiard room, but I just took the people off too, but that's all right. This is the front facade, which stays either as is or is reconstructed out of steel. Mm -hmm. These are the existing outer walls. This is the existing terrace. These trees exist. This was the dining room, and then you went back to the kitchen, and half of this is the garage, so you see the footprint. So let's start from this side. We have the existing garage. We have no bathrooms in the Willows Park. We have over 100 acres and no place other than Except those pie. ugly things that are at the parking lot, yes. So we take the garage, we take off the roof, we make it a cellar story pitched roof using the green tiles that are on the house, adding two bathrooms. We have a classroom or an office in here. Mm -hmm. Then we go so you, so you keep that existing structure? Keep the existing structure and extend it. So okay. we have two bathrooms right. and a classroom. We then have a funny little structure which could start, oops, it's not going to come off. That's okay. It'll start as pipe and canvas to be, but could eventually become a gazebo where because the driveway is right here, mm -hmm. a food truck, your caterer can come right up here. They've got a covered space to um, fix the food. You've also got a space for ca scouts or a class mm -hmm. or get out of the rain. And then we come into the main structure. And one of the reasons to keep this is to show you that this is big. This is a big pavilion. I just attended a lecture about Charles Barton Keene and was amazed how in his concept these steep-roofed green tiled structures were part of it. It was sort of blew me away. So it would be a structure with, these are skylights. Mm -hmm. So you have skylights in it. The original chimneys, which are built into it, you probably can't see them, but there are also four pillars here. He didn't build a pillar to be vertical up and down. Uh -huh. They were sort of like the shape of this stand. They were, they got fatter as okay. they got to the bottom. On the chimneys, because you will have the hearths and the fire. You'll, you'll keep, the, you'll keep, you'll keep the, the fireplaces. The fireplaces will be there. Plus, it gives an opportunity for those lovely plaques like are on the trail mm -hmm. to tell the history of the property. Mm -hmm. Rose Garland, 
Mm -hmm. the whole thing is it's developed. And then you have this large open space, which can be, I did a little research, uh, we've got room for a volleyball game, badminton, I don't know whether anybody mm -hmm. plays it, uh, picnics, or if you can stand my, this, this was a, a bad one, you have a room to put a very large tent here for a large party. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole thing is... Where, the, where's the terrace? The, here's all of this. This was oh. this in oh, the I house. Oh, I see. You're extending. And so it's all... Okay. So, so, and, and that is the vantage point from which you see this beautiful vista. Exactly. Of the, the water and the, the, the slope. Willow and trees yeah, and yeah. the slope and right. everything. So. I mean, I see this as having so many uses um, that you could be undercover outside, have a tent, have a small meeting, have a classroom or an office. Is, is that the only closed structure? Yes. Everything else would be open? Everything else is open. So it's sort of a three season. The pavilion itself, there would be no open. sidewalls? There's, but you could add plastic drop. You, you could. Know, you could add. Okay. Right. And it will have solar panels. Right. So the electricity will all be on site. Mm -hmm. There's money to be gotten for solar. Mm -hmm. And I have even seen solar built into roads and uh, sidewalks. Walkways, yeah. So there's nothing to say that yeah. we couldn't get a grant to have solar built into the terrace. Where would you put that game board? You said. You oh, right played? out here. Right out here. Uh -huh. So it's a canvas with 18 inch by 18 inch squares uh -huh. and you have human chess or human checkers. I just see three generations, crazy hats, having, teaching the kids how, to, it's, it's all about family. Yes. And it's all free. And, and it solves the problem of access. I don't mean public access, but people may have difficult physical difficulties. It's all handicapped accessible. Yeah. There's a ramp that's added here that goes to the front door. Right. There already was a ramp here that went to the kitchen. You could add a ramp here. Then as I'm building this, I'm thinking, hmm, we have a stairwell right here that goes to the basement. Right. How about we don't tear down the whole thing? We keep the basement to about here. Then you have space for storage for other classes. But, but part of the basement, I've never seen it, but I understand part of the basement is finished. It's a rats, what's mm -hmm. Raskeller? Raskeller. Yeah. Well, that's in the center part. The okay. laundry was over here, okay. and the where they stored the booze. Where would you? What would you do with the the lower level? I would have the Raskeller. I would have it. Oh, the well, that's that. I think has to come out. It does. Yeah. It, it excavated. It, well, there, what you do apparently is you preserve the chimneys, and I've uh -huh. had a structural engineer, you fill them with concrete, right. and then you destroy what needs to be destroyed mm. around it. You fill it with stone, you put in steel beams, and you lay okay. pour concrete. Mm -hmm. We would try to save the flagstone terraces. Now, I know you've consulted architects. Yes. Um, including, as you mentioned before, an historic Two historic historic architects. Architects. They're cl called classic architects. Classic architects, both of whom, uh, and you've shown this to both of them? We've been through this house, and yes. And their reaction is? They think it's a wonderful idea, although they are just categorically opposed to tearing down old houses. They are? Yes. They feel that too many old houses are being torn down, mm -hmm. which is the truth. Mm -hmm. Tear down these big old properties and build if, lots of townhouses. But if the house, if the property, if the building has no functional utility. Then they agree with me. Then they agree with me. And I figure, I mean, I'm no mathematician, but um, until we learned that there was still asbestos in this building. Oh, yes, yes. It was only, only, it was only going to be $150,000 to get to the surface. I'm told now, because there's so much asbestos, that it'll probably be 250 to take it down. We, my guesstimate, guesstimate is for, for $499,999, we could do this. Selectively demolish it. Right. And then reconstruct right. to this right. model. Right. And all we need is water, and right. we can use solar for electric power, and where's the maintenance? 
Uh, there's bound to be some maintenance. But the, 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 do you see big grounds. masons? Do you no, no. Do you see big no. maintenance? I don't. Uh, who would maintain it? Well, How would it be maintained? One of maintained? the most important components of this, and I'm glad you asked the question, is do you know Appleford Mansion? Yes, I was there last week. All right. They Beautiful have, building. They have the Friends of Appleford. Mm -hmm. Lower Marion Township would put a new roof on. It was a terrible leak. They would do a leak. The rest, and they plow the, the driveway mm -hmm. because they're plowing mm -hmm. in the area. And mm -hmm. The rest of it is done by the Appleford Committee. They take care of the gardens. They're beautiful. Which are beautiful. There's yeah. a beautiful spot over here where there could be gardens yeah. that would be deer proof, drought proof. Mm -hmm. It'd be a great mm -hmm. demonstration garden. So you would have a group of volunteers who would commit to being the adjunct support. And you have reason to believe that there are so enough I have, people? I have people already really? saying, sign me up. Uh -huh. I would love what to happens be part to, the, of this. to the garage? At the lower Down, level, the, the cottage. Yeah, the cottage. I well, you. we saved the cottage from demolition. I know. I don't know what's going to happen. And then it fell happen. into disrepair again. Well, perfectly honestly, if they had left the dehumidifier on and the sump pump connected, mm -hmm. it would be not. It would not be in the state that it is today. Mm -hmm. The oh. township's not so good with maintenance. So th what this else, is what it. Else do you it's purely This is it. Okay, tell me. Again, this is this is the international debut <laughs> of this model. <laughs> but you've been talking the concept for a very long time yes. in public meetings, privately, yes. and so on, and trying yes. to uh, garner support for it. Uh, generally, what's been the reaction? And have you been able to persuade any of those who had previously said, "I got it, can't take down the building," to this option? Yes, I have met people who are walking in Skunk Hollow and I'm trudging up out of the garden and unfortunately I'm recognized and they say, how are you doing with it? And, and they said, well, you know, I just don't see how you can do it. And by the time I've mm -hmm. done my dog and pony show, they go, you know, I could really use that. Mm -hmm. See, the piece of it is if they spend what's quoted as $3 million to fix it up for mm -hmm. rental, we can't use it. No. We can't. You have to have $3,500 to be the guest of the owner of $3,500 to even, walk in. even at that, again, I've never been, uh, I've never had a wedding there. Our weddings have been at Overbrook as far as Right. Well. But uh, my understanding from people who have had meeting, uh, weddings there or been to receptions, the, the first floor is so chopped up. Yes. There's no way for the, the all guests to convene. No. No. You're, they're moving from one room to the no. next. This actually, you could have a wedding with sure. the tent and the pavilion, yeah. and you'd have the beautiful view. When it was the house, yes. you looked at the walls of the house. You yes. didn't, you had to look through the walls to see the view shed, and it's the view shed that's and, and gorgeous. And I, it is. And I know you've talked about food trucks possibly coming on the property yes. for special Apparently events. Apparently, that's the hip thing the, the, today the tis, the tis. bring bring it to me well, i don't they, want to go to it and they bring the tables and the linens yeah. and the food and when it dinner's over they yeah. pack it all up in yes. the truck and off the truck goes yeah is there a special accommodation for well, that well yes there's a big driveway in here oh, the yes. circle and then i didn't know how to differentiate this is driveway and there's a ramp right here uh -huh. you can't see it from okay. here the, so they can pull right up next to this mini pavilion the, the driveway from the parking lot yeah. up to the building right. it would not change in any way? No. The, the pitch or the contour or anything else? No. Okay. No. But no. probably would be dressed up? Possibly. Possibly. What's interesting, and I don't know whether I have a picture of it, is I found in this magazine, American Country Homes, mm -hmm. the picture of the front facade in 1913. Mm -hmm. There was no driveway to. to Is that right? There was no driveway in front of the front door. We're still in horses. Yes. So they yeah. would come up to a point, mm -hmm. and then you would walk through a garden to mm -hmm. the front door. Mm -hmm. All that whole area was gardens. Mm -hmm. I said this is the international debut, but has the board of commissioners seen this, or will they? If is it I, your intention? If to? I am invited to present it. I will we'll, we'll bring talk it about present that. I, I, my understanding has been, from what I've heard and what I've heard from other people, is that the Board of Commissioners 
uh, retained an outside firm to come up, I assume an engineering firm of some kind, to come up with estimates for the various proposals. I think it's a proposals. Firm, but that's all right. Okay. Yeah. Well, they, some, they need some expertise to come right. up with people who know how to build things. Right. Uh, anyway, they're supposed to come up, as I understand it, with uh, estimates Six based on schemes, some I think it is. working assumptions. Right. As anywhere from demolish to right. completely refurbish. Right. And then my understanding is once that has been made public, which I understand will be at tonight's meeting of yes. the Board of Commissioners, yes. according to the agenda, yes. that sometime within the next couple of weeks, everyone who has an idea for a proposal, everyone mm -hmm. will, will be invited to come and present their proposals. I yes. don't know what format, but everyone either. will be. Right. And then they will match up which seems to have, which of these things is viable, is doable. Uh, against a, certain, a number of criteria. Because we doable and yeah. payable. Uh, th that is your understanding as well? Yes. So if we're sitting here in October, the presumption is that sometime in November, certainly not no later than the end of the year, Ryder Township will finally come to closure on what to do with the Willows after years yes. of deliberation, well, it's been debate. been for five years. Yeah, and, and, and many proposals. Yes. Including selling it. Yes. Leasing it. Yes both of which would be in violation of the deed, right. the restriction, public use, public use only. Right, right. Okay. That's your understanding as well? Yes. The timeline, that yes. is. Yes. All right. Yes. All right. So when I'm told, I actually was told to come tonight, but then I was told not to come tonight. Mm -hmm. When I'm notified by the manager, I will then trundle this in right. and I will... With an entourage, I assume. Hopefully with yeah. an entourage and we will show it. And uh, the reason I did this is because I could talk yes. till I was blue in the face, but I needed a visual yes. clue as to so the possibility gets out of your head and into your eyes. Well, I've seen because you brought them on when you were last here one-dimensional uh, right. schematics but of what it might look the, flat yeah yeah it th just this, doesn't this no. this uh, hopefully people will go uh, oh well, now is, is not only will they say oh that's a good idea but they might say have you thought about doing yes. so and so obviously this has been a labor of love yes uh, if you had had a professionals put this together it would have cost you Five hundred and a thousand dollars. So this is a labor of love. It well, certainly and does they the wouldn't job. have. There was a thought process yes. of this yeah. that I kept look. It's it's been in my dining room, sitting on the ironing board all <laughs> summer, and I'd go by it yeah. all day long, uh -huh. and I'd go, hmm, that's uh -huh. how I thought about the basement yeah. under the kitchen. I thought, wait a minute. We need places yeah. to store stuff. We've got an outside entrance. We've got water right at that outside mm -hmm. entrance. How about we revise this? Mm -hmm. So um, I don't think, not that I'm any better. I mean, I know this is, I've done these before, but they were not to this size. Mm -hmm. If they'd been this big, it, it would have been job. easy. It but, does job. you know, it's a concept. Now, those who are interested in learning more and, and supporting, if they choose to, right. this particular option, how do they do that? Well, I think they send me an email. They do two things. Go ahead. One is they write their commissioner and they say, I've seen this possibility right. and I want you to take very seriously. What are we look calling this? It. Well, we're calling it, I don't know. <laughs> Postmodern reconstruction. Post I don't know. No, we got something. Call it. No, we'll call it Sarah's option. All right, Sarah's option. Sarah's option. They first write their commissioner right. and send a copy to the township, All right. and then they send me an email. I have no problems okay. getting an email because I can filter them out, All right. and they can send me yes, no, maybe. Have mm -hmm. you got another idea? Mm -hmm. What are you thinking? Mm -hmm. So my email is very simple. It's one word, and it's S F pillbox at gmail.com. Pillbox as in pillbox. As in because my middle name was Freeze, and so I was called Freezy Pillbox <laughs> as a kid. I didn't like it at all. <laughs> okay. And some guy I dated called me, he used to call me his dearest Sarah. deep freeze. Sarah, I, I, on behalf of the community, truly, I, I want to thank you for your interest, your energy. Uh, you just don't quit. 
and w whether you're right or wrong really doesn't matter. What the important thing you do is to, to encourage discussion, debate, uh, to at least consider the options. Well, that's it. Yeah. If, if we only had one option, which yeah. was to spend $3 million to restore it to a rental yeah. for $4,000 yeah. an event, well, then in 10 we'll, years, what have we got? But we'll, if we think outside the box. We'll see what happens. Exactly. Again, thank you very, very much. You're very Bring welcome. Thank, thank you, you for, for having me. Until next time, again, this is Sarah's option. If you're interested, please do as Sarah suggested. Contact the township, the Board of Commissioners, and contact Sarah. I'm sure she would appreciate uh, hearing from you and your support, your moral support. Until next time, this is 30 Minutes. I am Rick Anthony. Take very good care of yourselves.